Hey guys, what's up? Filippo here. Welcome to a brand new video. So today we talk about working with lug clips, clips that have been shot in lug. And I'll try to make your life easier while working with clips shot in lug space. So today I got two clips, both shot with the Canon in Canon RAW, so I can manage the RAW from DaVinci Resolve. You can use this technique with whatever camera you got it will be really simple i'll be including in the end the usage of the film looks lots that we saw that are already included with the venture soul just in order to let you see how it's simple to create a pipeline a managed pipeline and just make the look with a film look let's talk as we are pretending you know to be shooting with film so first thing that i normally do to convert my image is using the um, OFX plugin that we got in Cyber Solve, which is the color space transform. I'm not a big fan of using LUTs for uh, conversion, even because it's a destructive method and the color space transform will be always better. So I'll be renaming this corrector as CST. And as you know, in the input, we got to put the input of our camera. So here I got my uh, Canon C Log 2. The image is not well balanced, so I want to probably make a white balance corrector. We can tweak temperature tint around here, but in order to, you know, have extreme precision, I might do this with the offset and normally I might tend to balance with offset time by time. And just taking a look at his skin tone and at the overall look and almost there, it's quite right. Okay, so we got our conversion, our clip, that's cool. And where do we want to place this? So as you know me, you know that I tend to work into log spaces. So I tend to take this, place it to the end, and be known that everything that I'll be doing will be floating inside Canon uh, space and will be delivered into Rec. 709. As right now, I am, you know, seen referred in Rec. 709. So by doing this, one thing is that if I'll be, you know, making selection with the qualifier, everything won't be working properly. So we got low contrast, got low saturation, everything will be working not at its intent to be working. At the same time, if I'll be working with my wheels, yes, they will work, but they won't work properly as they normally do into a more condensed space as Rex 9 or I might say also P3. So it's cool to use it. You can also use quick turnaround, quick, you know, tricks I might call it. If you saw the second input note that I made video, you can, by the way, create another corrector and just make the exact same thing here. So make your correction here without an output and just select on another corrector, whatever you want to select on the Rex online space and then drag I might say your your selection whatever you want so you get the intention of this but there is actually a simple way uh, a simple way that time by time I, I use and time by time I might not use but the point is getting you know the workflow done and by no be known uh, which one will suit your need for your old production so for a situation like this, I said, I might be good in this way and working inside this space, but what if I tend to put my conversion, you know, at the beginning of like everything and start working in a Rec. 709. So first thing, obviously I'll be clipping, I'll be creating dragons and things around because I won't be controlled by color space, but you have to understand that the color space transform can be used multiple times in multiple ways. So you can just float inside the Rec. 709 and just reconvert your image with a second color space transform right here. And this time we'll be inputting our Rec. 709 and we'll be outputting which one? I don't know, maybe with the Xenon film log intermediate and then adding a conversion look as we saw 
on another video from the one that I did a few times ago. So in this way, as you can see, we got a pretty cool film look conversion. So got to create a film look right here. And we can control our image by you know remaining inside Rec 709. So my tweaks are gain, lift, and gamma will be controlled inside the Rec 709 space. The output will be converted and managed by our film look LUT. At the same time, we will be delivering, basing ourselves on a LUT, so everything that we will be doing, masks and stuff. So it's it's a really simple scheme right now. You can expand it, whatever you want, as easily managed as it will be as, you know, normally, you know, putting our CST, our single CST in the end. But as you can see, by choosing our film lock, we just got a really, really simple um, note tree. But at the same time, look at the look. Look at these eyes. Look at the shadows areas, the black areas. Everything is really well managed. And this will also let you understand the, that the, the main look, it's made by, you know, few things. But that's the point when you are trying to, you know, simplify the thing and remain boxed inside Rex 09. That's one method. So you just have to be known that on your delivery, you want to output your gamma, so the scene on film log, and you also want to, uh, you know, be controlled with your LUT. Another thing that you want to uh, fix properly on your first CST is your luminous mapping and your gamut mapping. And we're gonna talk about gamut right here, and I've taken this clip because of that, because we got tons of blues right here. But about that, you know, you can <clears throat> use the tone mapping method with the VNC, that is the standard one that we got, or the luminous mapping, that is also a really cool one, you know, to remap your luminous around. Also about the gamut mapping, I won't be talking about this with this clip, because it's a really particular one. So still shot with the Canon um, C200 C Log 2, so again, I'm gonna convert my color space, kind of cinema gamut, and here C log two. So as you can see, blues are really strong. So in this particular way, if I'll go further, I'll just create two nodes, color space, and transcode everything into uh, film log. Oops, drag things around. Film log, yeah, and then I'm gonna apply the LUT. Everything will be working, but as you can see, we got some issues in the blue. If I open the vector scope, everything here is blown out. So what we want to do, we want to use a luminous mapping at first, but time by time, the adaptation might be working, but it won't be uh, enough. So we want to go on gamut mapping, saturation compression, and with the compression, we got the knee and the max saturation that we got here, and we can control it. So in order to have a proper image, we want to have our custom key and the maximum saturation that we got on our image. If this, if this won't be enough, we also got with our OFX the uh, gamut limiter and the gamut mapping. There's the same one that we got with the CSD. And these are here in order to help you with particular images such as this one that have really strong tints and that are not supported in the output. So you want to be fixing this and you want to be compressing this. So also in the luminous mapping here, I can just trick things around. So we can also manage this from the gamut mapping that we want right here. So you will be perceiving this even from there. And we can do two fixers right here, maybe a bit on the left and on the gamma. And the loop might be quite right. We can tricks around, maybe the gain. So with few tricks around, we can refine the look, be ready to map everything and deliver it. It might be an addict to you know understand the process and the method the first time, but when you got it, it will be really simple to manage your log footage. So I hope it helped you. And until the next time, be brave and make it better.